Are you hungry? I know I am. Let's get cracking. What's up guys? My name is Jacob. This is Conscious Cooking and today we are blackening black drum. I want to give you guys, it's not a challenge. It's It's a challenge. I challenge you to do this. Go to wherever it is that you buy your fish. Fresh fish, not frozen. Go to the fishmonger himself and ask, if you can only take home one of these things today, what do you take home? And they will answer. And for me today, that answer was the black drum. The answer that they're going to give you is most often going to be whatever is either the freshest or simply whatever looks, tastes, smells the best. For example, today it was a black drum. It was the only fish that they had gotten in today. Everything else had come in sometime earlier. I don't know exactly when. But I want to give you guys that challenge to... Broaden your horizons, because whatever he would have answered me, I would have taken. Unless, of course, I'm not allowed to cook it in this house. In which case, I would have been like, well, what's your next choice? Because, of course, I live in a kosher household. I, there are certain things that I just can't do. But that is your challenge. How are we going to go about blackening this black drum? Well, we need to make a blackening seasoning. You have a couple options here. You can buy a blackening seasoning if you'd like, as long as the first ingredient isn't salt. Because then you're mostly eating salt. For those of you who are curious, the way that ingredient lists on products work is that the product that is used the most, or the ingredient that is of the highest amount, is listed first. Then the second most used ingredient, then third, and so on. If salt is the first ingredient, then you're mostly having salt. You're having more salt than anything else. And yes, salt does enhance flavor. However, it's it shouldn't be the main flavor that you're going for. That's an important challenge to you guys. I'm going to be making my own. And I'm going to be going about this a little bit differently. Now, when I think of... You know, good blackened fish. I think of, you know, Louisiana blackened fish, which is where I live now. The problem is that I don't really want to have the cayenne pepper in there. I don't really want to deal with the spice because it will probably give me some acid reflux. So I'm going to go about it a little bit different way. And I'm going to go with more of like a butteriness to it without using butter, of course. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to use oregano, thyme, and rosemary as my three herbs. Then I need everything else. I have salt, pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, and smoked paprika. One of my personal favorite spices. And that's going to be the bulk, the brunt of what we're using. But we need a little bit extra to sort of bind everything together and make it all, you know, work. So... What you're going to see in this episode today is I'm going to have six pieces of fish. And I'm not going to say what brand of cracker I'm using. I'll give you a hint. There's a very famous hotel chain with the same name. There's your hint. For each piece of fish, I'm going to need about one cracker. So I'm going to be using six of these crackers, crushed up as well as I can... And then I'm going to put all of the ingredients into my spice grinder, or if you want to use your food processor, you can use your food processor. Buzz it up until it's a nice, smooth powder. Nice and, like, fluffy powder. You're going to coat the fish with it, and you're basically just going to put it over medium heat and cook it. Because we want that nice crust on the fish. 
what's going to happen is when the... And here's why we're using the crackers specifically. The crackers are going to soak up moisture that's leaving the fish as it cooks. And basically it's going to turn into a paste. And that paste is going to turn into a crust. Because we're combining the protein-laden moisture inside the fish with the fatty, crispy goodness of the crackers to make a really nice, flavorful crust, along with all the spices that we're adding to it. So we're going to have a really nice crust, really nice, fluffy, flaky fish on the inside. And I'm probably just going to put some rice on the side of this one. Call it Cajun sushi if you want. But that's going to be it. Let's go get started. So basically, all that we want to do here is cut each of these three fillets into two pieces, giving us a total of six pieces, just because we want them to be a little bit smaller, a little easier to handle, and so that more of them will fit in the pan, because it would be kind of hard to put more than one of these in the pan at any given time. So I'm going to cut each of these in half, so they're all you know, relatively the same size. Now I'm just putting them on a plate with some paper towel just to try and keep them a little more dry. And now we're going to cover them with the blackening seasoning and get ready to cook it. Put the pan over medium heat, your largest nonstick pan over medium heat, and you need to give it a full five minutes to come up to heat because we're gonna be putting a lot of stuff in there and we want it to hold on to as much heat as possible. So while that's happening, we're gonna season all of the fillets, put them on a side plate, and wait until we're ready to start. All right, it's been five minutes, the pan is hot. We're going to hit it with the nonstick spray. And add half of the fish. We're gonna give this about three to five minutes per side. They're thin pieces, it shouldn't take too long to cook. And we've got plenty of real estate to have all the heat get soaked up by the fish as opposed to the pan just, oh, fuck. We're gonna give this about three to five minutes per side. Because we're using such a large pan and we're not putting so much fish in it, we shouldn't have too much of a temperature drop. So it shouldn't take too long for the fish to cook, seeing as how they are those thin pieces. So we'll be back in three to five minutes to check on them, and then we'll flip them. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it has been about four minutes, I would say. And as you can also tell, the fish is, the sides have turned white. That's the indicator that I usually go with that lets me know that the fish is about halfway cooked. It'll continue cooking from the opposite side with residual heat. So we're gonna flip these. And when I have really small pieces like this, my favorite tool isn't a spatula. It's actually just a pair of tongs. I find that with, with, with these really small pieces, it's a little bit easier to maneuver them and flip them over when you have the finger-like precision of a pair of tongs. So flip your pieces over, make sure the thickest parts are as close to the ring of fire as possible because that's where it's going to be the hottest. We're going to leave these there for another, you know, three to five minutes. Four seems to be going well for my pan here. It will be different at your house. Nothing's ever exactly the same. But we'll be back to check on them and we should be ready to rock and roll after that. All right, folks, it's been about another four minutes, which seems to be just on target for me on my pan. I'm gonna take these out, put them on a plate over here to let them rest. And we're gonna cook the other remaining three pieces when I can get this piece, oh my god, I am butchering this.
Use a spatula. Use a spatula. Learn from my mistakes. Just make sure to give the pan a couple minutes to heat back up. All right, folks, it's probably been about like one or two minutes. Uh, the pan has had time to heat back up. Spray again. Fish in pan. Like I said, for me, it's about four minutes. So I'll be back in about four minutes to flip them. All right, folks, it has been my four minutes. I'm going to flip them. Now flipping. Yes, the tongs work very well for flipping. I'm gonna use the spatula when I'm taking them out. Learn from my mistakes. All right, folks, once again, spatula to get them out. The tongs were just for flipping. See, I'm not ruining it this time. Let them rest for five minutes and then we'll be ready to plate. Eat off, time to clean up. All right, folks, that is going to be it for this week. I wanna thank you all so much for watching and showing your support. I will see you all next week. You can find the protocol for this episode in the description down below, as well as a link to my Twitter and my Patreon in case you want to take the extra mile in supporting me. That's going to be it for me, though. I will see you all next week. Goodbye.